Hi everybody, Martin here, and today I thought I would do a quick uh, how-to video, and the topic of this one is how to make a print-and-play game cards using a laminator, so laminated print-and-play game cards. Um, if you uh, have checked out some of the other videos in my channel, you'll know that a few months back I did a how-to on how to make print-and-play game cards um, with three layers, uh, using a plain paper front, plain paper back, uh, cardstock in the middle, and then some gluing and some, uh, you know, some uh, uh, enamel, uh, spray enamel on them, and 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 you know, it's pretty involved. It's a great, it's a way, it's a great way to make um, cards for print and play games, but it's uh, also pretty time consuming. And there's a lot more effort involved. So I've recently started uh, a much simpler technique. Uh, which involves laminating the cards, and I thought that I would uh, share that with you today. So let's talk about materials and equipment. What are you going to need if you want to start making print-and-play game cards using the laminator method? Well, first of all, and most obviously, as the name implies, you're going to need a laminator. So I just happen to have here my Amazon Basics uh, Thermal Laminator. And uh, this guy is the base model. It cost about 20 bucks on Amazon. And um, as you'll see here on the back here, it has uh, two settings. It has settings for um, three mil um, laminator sheets and five mil laminator sheets. And I only ever use the five mil setting, even if I'm um, using three mil sheets, which is what I am. So uh, you need a laminator. Amazon Basics Thermal Laminator is the one that I have. And you'll notice it's already on it's already ready to start laminating and of course as soon as i mention it the ready light uh, turns off i guess it got shy but hopefully that light will come back in a minute um, as well you're going to need some laminating sheets and no surprise here i'm using the amazon basics letter size laminating pouches and these are three mil okay uh, these come in a pack of 100 uh, I forget exactly how much this cost me. I want to say it was around $10, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, so a pack of 100 letter size laminating pouches. This is 3 mil. So yeah, you're probably wondering, Martin, why do you get 3 mil pouches if you're using the 5 mil setting on the laminator? Great question. It's because I want there to be more heat. Uh, the more heat there is, the more that the laminate will fuse to the paper, the cardstock that I'm using. So speaking of paper, um, I am using um, cardstock, and I've already got this printed out. So this is a game that I'll be showing you today. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a Star Wars retheme of a uh, game called Eminent Domain Microcosm, uh, which is available on Board Game Geek. And um, if I remember to, I will place a link where you can download. Uh, the print-and-play version of Eminent Domain Microcosm, as well as the um, Star Wars retheme. All of these files are, avail are available on Board Game Geek. But anyway, uh, the point is, uh, I wanted to show off, this is just basic cardstock paper. Um, this particular one is, uh, the brand is Georgia Pacific, and I buy it at Walmart for about uh, $5 for a pack of 150 sheets. This is 110-pound cardstock, and once again, the brand is Georgia Pacific. So that's what I use. It's the only paper I use. And as you can see, I print on it double-sided. All right. Um, what else are we going to be using today? We are going to be using, to cut the cards, we're going to be using uh, a paper trimmer. This is the one that I have. It's called a Fiskars uh, paper trimmer. This is generally for uh, scrapbooking or crafting. Um, as you can see, it's uh, not very heavy duty, and it doesn't need to be. But what I like about this guy is that it has, I don't know if you can totally see it, but there is a guide wire uh, down the center here, which uh, helps it, makes it really easy for me to tell if um, I have aligned what I want to cut uh, straight so that uh, I get straight cuts using a paper trimmer like this. All right, so Fiskars paper trimmer. I want to say that I bought this brand new from Amazon for around $15 to $20. And finally, how are we going to get some nice rounded corners on our laminated cards? Um, you've heard me talk about this before, the Kadumaru Pro Corner Rounder, uh, except nothing less. This guy is less than $10, 
and I get it on Amazon. And uh, very famously, uh, whenever you buy one of these, allow six to eight weeks for delivery. It does come from uh, Japan, I believe it comes from. Uh, but this is pretty much the best bang for buck when it comes to corner rounders. Okay, so laminator, laminating sheets, three mil, uh, paper trimmer, corner rounder, and 110 pound cardstock. Looks like we are all ready to, to do some uh, print and play cards using the laminator technique. So join me at the table, join me at the work table, and um, we'll get started. Right, the first step is we have to go to Board Game Geek and we have to get the files that we're going to print out uh, for this project. So uh, this game is called Eminent Domain Microcosm. And uh, here is the page on Board Game Geek in the browser. And if you scroll down to the files section over here and click on files, then you will find all of the uh, files that are associated with this game. Here is the uh, PNP, the print and play for the uh, actual game Eminent Domain Microcosm. But the one that I'm interested in today is the Star Wars retheme. So there's one in French and then someone made an English version. So this is the file name Star Wars Microcosm Dark Nico version in English. So I've clicked on that and then um, you go ahead and you uh, download that PDF and then this is what it's going to look like and it's eight pages and it's nicely laid out in uh, card fronts and backs which means if you have a printer capable of double-sided printing then you are all set to just go and hit the print button make sure that you are uh, your printer is set to print double-sided and make sure that it won't resize the page or anything like that. Print it natively or whatever uh, prints uh, page size you're comfortable with, A4 or US letter, hit print on that. So once you've done that, you should start getting sheets that look like this. So, and uh, by the way, I'm printing on cardstock as I mentioned earlier. So uh, prints on the front and then the card backs are on the back of the sheet as well. Card front, card backs. Cool. So that's step one is to get the print and play file and get it printed on a double sided fashion uh, on your cardstock. Step two is you want to be able to uh, then put it into your laminating sheets. So here is one of the uh, three mil laminating sheets that I've got from my uh, from my Amazon uh, basics uh, shipment. So you open one of these guys up like so. And you take one of your printed pages and then you insert it and just make sure that it's, um, you know, covered with uh, in, in the kind of the basic center of the laminate. You don't have to be too precise with this. Then you cover that guy up so that it's now sandwiched in between the laminate on both sides. I'll do that one more time over here for the other sheet. As you can see. There you go. You don't have to be too precise. I don't really care about uh, centering the sheet here on this side or this side because you know what? I'm going to cut this all anyway later. Now, once we've got them in the sheets, the next step is you then want to run them through your laminator. So let me get my laminator in the pit in the frame here. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we are now simply going to insert our uh, printed sheets in the cardstock inside of the 3 mil laminating pouch into the laminator which as I mentioned is set to 5 mil. So even if these are 3 mil sheets I've set the laminator to 5 mil. And we're going to go ahead and insert and you push it forward enough and then the pinch rollers inside the laminator catch and then it just starts kind of magically uh, pulling the uh, pouch with the contents through the laminator and uh, it takes a little less than a minute per sheet and what we're going to want to do and so so here's the thing here's a secret while we're waiting for this to finish um, you want the, re the reason why I set it to five mil even if it's a three mil pouch is because I want the heat to be so intense that the laminate actually fuses with the paper Right? So I'm not really interested in just having laminate fuse to laminate. I want it to fuse with the paper. 
And the reason why I want to do that is because um, when I cut this, I want to be able to cut all the way through. I don't want to have, um, you know, like when you laminate ID cards or whatever, and then there's still like excess laminate on the sides. I'm not interested in that. I want my cards to look pretty much like uh, regular playing cards. So uh, once this guy is finished, then the other thing that I do on each and every sheet, so as you can see here, we've already finished laminating one pass. And why do I say one pass? Because I'm gonna turn right around and do it a second time. That's right. Every one of these sheets, I laminate them twice. There you go. And you can probably guess why I laminate them, why I run them through the laminator twice, is because I am obsessed with getting enough heat going on so that that laminate really just fuses into the cardstock. Um, so that is the rationale there, that is the why. I've already done a couple more. So this is what the uh, fully laminated sheets look like, like so. And um, we've got one more to do. And then once we've got the lamination done, then we're gonna move on to the cutting and trimming of these cards. So, All right, we're done with the lamination phase. Here's the result. We've got uh, four double-sided printed sheets of cardstock, fully laminated, and each one of these has been run through that laminator twice, right? To get that uh, really, really nice fusing of the laminate to the cardstock going on. Okay, so now the next step is we want to start cutting using our uh, Fiskars uh, paper trimmer. And uh, my best practice that I've uh, started doing, which I actually didn't mention in my previous video on how to make print and play game cards, is uh, you should always cut from the back. So not from the card front, but from the card back. And the reason for that is that if there is a slight... Um, uh, lack of registration or slight misalignment between the card fronts and the card backs um, That won't be obvious from the back side It'll be obvious from the front side that faces you which is not as critical But if you've got cards that are obviously kind of marked or misaligned on the back and that might make it impossible for you to actually be able to play that uh, With other people or with yourself because you'll be able to tell what card it is from the imperfection on the back so uh, best practice always cut from the back side. So we're going to start with this sheet right over here, but we'll get it started right now. And like I said, one of the, the, the nice things I really like about this paper trimmer is it has a guide wire right down this uh, center shaft, and that'll tell me where the blade is going to be passing. And so uh, ideally your print and play file has some crop marks or cut marks. Uh, and you can align that with that guide wire, and then you'll know exactly where your blade is going to pass. So I've gone ahead and done that for this side right here. And remember, I am cutting from the back. All right. Okay. So in other videos, I've cut using a rotary uh, cutter and a cork back metal ruler and a self-healing mat. And while I still do like that for its precision, I have to say that um, you know using a paper trimmer is just a very, very easy way to cut things. All right. Right here's a little status update after cutting through the first sheet. Uh, here are the cards as they come out, I'm showing you the fronts. Now I'm showing you the backs. And as you can see, everything looks pretty well aligned. And um, the other thing I like about the lamination method is that the cards slide pretty smoothly against each other. And the way that they feel is very, very similar to normal playing cards, and you can actually riffle shuffle cards produced in this manner as long as you're using uh, a satisfying thickness of cardstock and uh, the two layers of uh, laminate on the front and the back. And as you can see, I've cut all the way to the quick. I'm not bothering to leave any excess laminate uh, at the edges here because 
if you've done your job correctly, uh, then, you know, as I keep saying, the laminate has fused to the cardstock, so uh, you don't have to worry about leaving like a little strip of uh, just bare laminate on, this, on the edges. I cut all the way uh, to just where the card is. I cut them like normal print and play cards is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so um, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna cut down these three remaining sheets and then we're gonna move on to the corner rounding. See you okay, so we're all done with the cutting. Here's uh, all the excess uh, laminate and paper that we trimmed off of these cards. And here are all the cards. And hopefully you can see as they come flashing by that they're all uh, pretty satisfyingly aligned on the fronts and on the backs. They're looking good. Now, these are 34 cards. There you go, 136 corners that I have to round. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my Kadumaro Pro Corner Rounder set to the medium setting. So if you have standard size, poker size playing cards like this, I generally like to round the card corners at the medium setting. So, we're gonna go get started. And that is what a card is going to look like with the corners rounded. And we're just going to keep on doing that 130 more times. And then we will essentially be done. All right, we are done rounding our card corners. Here is the deck. Let's go ahead and get them squared away. And voila. We are now done with our print and play game cards, front, back, nicely laminated. And they feel good inside my hands. They feel good in my hands and uh, they, they, you know, kind of go on the table very nicely. They have a little bit of snap when you, uh, when you, you know, kind of uh, run them against each other like that, just like you would expect a normal playing card or a retail playing card to have. So I like that aspect of it. And, um, you know, I'm not very good at shuffling, but I'll show you how these guys shuffle as well. Now you're gonna make me all self-conscious about my shuffling skills. People are gonna make fun of me, I know. Oh, see, horrible, I'm horrible at shuffling. But hopefully you're getting the idea as one dropped and I'm gonna pick it up off the ground. Uh, you get the idea that these cards, uh, using the laminating method, uh, pretty much have come very close to approximating the look and feel um, of regular playing cards, aside from being a little bit glossier because they're, they're laminated, um, you know, rather than the kind of matte finish that regular playing cards have. Okay, so I hope that uh, you have uh, enjoyed and learned something from my uh, quick tutorial about how to make print and play game cards using the lamination method. I am very pleased with how these cards come out and uh, the production time for these cards. These 34 cards took me a little less than an hour from printing all the way through the process to the corner rounding and then having a uh, playable deck of uh, print and play cards. So um, this is my current favorite method of making print and play cards. It's faster, it's easier, and it generates cards that have that kind of satisfying snap going on. Unlike uh, the cards that I was making before that are full of, that, that look good, um, but don't have that snap. Um, so this is, uh, this is the way to go for me for right now and for the future. Uh, for the foreseeable future, I'll be any print and play games I'll be making, I'll be using the lamination method. Until next time, this has been Martin, and we'll see you next time on my print and play channel, which I've called The Cut.